Hello, <laughs> welcome to the Edmonton Journal, Edmonton Sun World Cup Roundtable. Uh, we'd like to thank you for joining us. Uh, we talking all things World Cup in this roundtable. My name is Derek Van Dies. Now we get into the real meat of the tournament. Now, uh, basically, all the groups have played with the exception of one. Uh, now we're moving on to team's second games. And the second games, obviously, some are huge now with the implications that happened in the first game. Um, we'll start with you, Jamie. Just so far, what do you what are you expecting out of you know maybe some of these second games? Brazil second game, Argentina second game, England second game. Do you think they kind of put it together now that they got kind of got their feet wet? I think they know what their deficiencies are for sure. Yeah. I think with Germany, um, I think if you if they look at themselves, they realize that they're not the same team they were four years ago. Mm -hmm. That they're not gonna just kind of walk the tournament like they did last time and. Uh, especially in a year like this where it's a bit of a toss-up, especially with teams like Netherlands out of it. And there's a lot of more, I guess you could say, bogey teams. Yeah. Um, especially when you look at Germany, they're playing, well, their group not so much, but there's some other groups like um, like Group B with Iran and Morocco. And the fact that Mara uh, Iran is sitting on the top of their group with no sh no shots and a yeah. you know, one-goal win. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I think uh, just with some of these bigger teams, they – not realizing that's going to be the year that they thought it was or the World Cup they thought it was going to be where they can just kind of top their groups um, so easily. I think there are a couple groups that you look at them and you kind of think of this might be a little sewn up already and if you look at like Group A, um, Saudi Arabia is kind of all over the place. I could I could see them finishing with something like a minus 17 goal differential. <laughs> um, yeah. um, I think in that game you have to put out most law for Egypt yeah. and ho hopefully they they're able to kind of boss Russia, and but some of these big teams are going to kind of have to look at themselves and realize it's not uh, not the easy tournament that they thought it was going to be. The Egypt game is interesting, Lauren, because obviously we saw what Mo Salah did in, in the English Premier League this year. He was just fantastic. Everyone said he was healthy, or at least the Egyptians said he was healthy, but he never came off the bench against Uruguay. So that tells me that, no, he wasn't healthy because I think at an 80% Mo Salah is better than most of the guys that they had on that team. What if he comes on? If he plays his second game, what are you expecting against him and against Russia? Like, are you expecting the most all that we saw before he got taken down in the Champions League final, or is this going to be uh, a ninety, the ninety-five percent most all? It's a good question, right? I mean, I think you have to look at it's sort of similar to what we've been talking about with a lot of these games too. I think you look at some of these teams that sort of have these assumptions going in that they're going to produce a certain way and perform a certain way and it's the beauty of the World Cup. It just doesn't always happen that way. And um, so you look at Egypt and you think to yourself, okay, what? you're right, what is going to happen in the next game? What sort of performance are we going to get? Um, I, I certainly couldn't call anything because I feel like I haven't been able to call much in this <laughs> yeah. World Cup so far looking at um, what we've seen recently. So. Uh, I don't know what what I'd be able to say in regards to that. I mean, it'll be it'll be good to see the next two games and see what happens in that group for sure. Um, you know, Russia being there at home, they had such a great performance that first game. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if they can hold their lead in that group. But yeah, Yuri, is there a game that kind of stands out for you the next week? Their second second run ago. <coughs> um, well, I don't know. It's it's one of those ones where I don't think there's enough. I don't think there's an upset coming. Yeah, that's that's the thing, and and that's that's the best part about watching World Cups is getting to see those upsets and getting to see those little teams come up through. Uh, I, I just don't see anything there on paper that kind of leads me to believe that that can happen. Um, I mean, let's let's go and have a look at say the Australia Denmark game, no. just because I want to go back to that. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's we had a bit of the the Socceroos had a bit of a, a bit of a scare in camp. They um, I was reading this morning that uh, their strikers Tommy Urich and a defender Josh Risden um, were in doubt, but they've been cleared, so they're ready to play for this week. Uh, it, it should be a good game. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Uh, there's there was an interesting uh, story out of Australia that the Australian fans in Kazan uh, actually drank the pubs dry um, over the weekend. <laughs> right. they, that they, doesn't they, surprise yeah, me right? being, with, being with two Aussies on Saturday. Yeah. That does not surprise me in the least. So that's a, that's a good yeah. sign. That's <laughs> a good sign. <laughs> that's a, yeah. uh, to me, the game that stands out, I think, to me is Germany-Sweden mm -hmm. uh, on Saturday. Germany-Sweden. Germans have to win this game. It's it's And the Sweden is not a walkover. Like It's a tough team. And I think they have to go into this game knowing that they have to win. 
Um, and the Swedes also know that the Germans have to win, and the Swedes won their opening game. So I think all the pressure is on Germany going into this game. And if Sweden wanted to sit back and play 11 players in net, basically, and say we're going to take a 0-0 draw mm-hmm. because we, with the point we probably get through, that, that's a lot of pressure on Germany. And I think and, and just interesting to, to think your thoughts on, on having to beat Sweden, something that Italy couldn't do to get in the World Cup. And Sweden is a resilient team, and we saw that in the qualifiers when they knocked out Italy in the in the and basically in the playoffs. I, I feel like it could be a little bit about, a little bit like the Olympics when um, I think it was Ho- Hope Solo came out and said and they, when they lost to Sweden in the... Yeah, she was really upset. Yeah. Minutes, was like, yeah. I can't believe yeah. Sweden sat back for 120 minutes yeah. and beat us in, the, in penalties. But, yeah. um, I think Sweden was exceptional defensively today and I think they're going to have to kind of double that effort tomorrow I, or with the next game just because um, there's so much po- firepower moving forward with Germany and I think they they know that they're going to have to to press for 90 minutes so um i think it's going to be interesting i i would agree with you there i'd say i kind of like it's it's a bit of a smaller game but egypt russia i think is going to be quite defining for that group a i think it's, it's got to be mo salah's show um he's got to go into that game and and sort of take over and egypt egypt without mo salah is is not really a, a capable team i think so it's. It could be that that group is kind of du- done and dusted, mm-hmm. yep. pending after that result. So we'll see. I think Group H will be interesting too. Haven't heard too much about that. With uh, looking forward to see those games tomorrow. Yep. So. 